The seasons come and go like thoughts of you Like a wave returns to the sea into the blue Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video for you guys and I know, I know all of you are going to be really happy about this video because I get questions literally on a daily basis on all my different TTC videos and finally I'm going to do, I actually already have a video up on this but I'm just going to explain it to you guys one more time and I'm also going to elaborate a little bit more on OPKs and what OPKs do, what they test for, how to test for them. So, and I'm going to show you guys my, my test progression line. So that is what today's video is going to be about. If you are interested in them, then just make sure you keep on watching. Okay, you guys. So let's talk about OPKs. What are OPKs? So OPKs are ovulation predictor kits. And they pretty much look like this. They pretty much look like this. They come in a little bag like this. I'm going to open one up so that I can show you guys. They look just, they look just like this pregnancy test like if you get one of those cheapy pregnancy tests they look just like pregnancy tests so I'm of course not going to use this one anymore but if I can if it focuses uh, maybe not there we go okay so this one's not used it looks just like a pregnancy test but it's an ovulation ovulation predictor kit so what do these do they test for a hormone called luteinizing hormone. So the luteinizing hormone is a hormone that we produce throughout our cycle. But when we get close to ovulation, there is like this peak. So they call it a surge. If you guys are watching all these CTC videos, then you guys might hear it as LH surge. And I mention it a lot too in my video. So an LH surge means the peak, like the peak of where when your luteinizing hormone kind of hormone kind of shoots up and it hits it hits like a very high peak a high high level um, and that just means you're gearing up to ovulate so that's what these tests do as do ovulation predictor kits detect the LH surge they detect L they detect the LH hormone and based on how dark the line gets then you will see if you are peaking or not meaning are you at your peak or are you not do you just have lh in your in your system but maybe it's not at its highest it's not peaking i hope i'm making sense so don't worry if none of this is making sense don't worry it will make sense once i show you my actual tests okay so the box that I am using to test, there are so many things out there that you can use to test. I myself have tried two different forms of OPKs, which is Mira, and I have a completely different video on Mira. Mira is more pricey, but it gives you a 99% um, accuracy on your LH hormone level. And then the second thing that I have used, this is my second time using them, is the regular Amazon Cheap OPK. The brand that I always tend to stick stick with is this one. It's called Easy at Home. The reason, I don't know why, I just, I tried these before. I tested with my first baby, with my, uh, my miscarriage, my second uh, pregnancy, um, and with this third one. Um, and this third time that I'm trying, um, I've just decided to use, stick to the same brand. So easy at home. I will have all of these things linked in my description box if you guys are interested in purchasing them. There's a link that will take you straight to it. So these ovulation tests. So this kit comes with, I love this kit because it comes with 50, 50 ovulation tests and 20 pregnancy tests. So literally you have everything here. So you test for ovulation and then once and then during your two week wait you can start testing with your um with the pregnancy test you don't have to run out and buy a pregnancy test so this is why i like these kits okay um and let me show you the inside okay they look like this so 50 50 ovulation tests and 20 pregnancy tests okay so this is the kit that i use and why is it important to test for ovulation? It's important because that is the time when you can get pregnant. When you are testing with OPKs, you are going to be given pretty much a window where you know that it's time to start baby making because once you hit that search, once you hit that peak, you have 
24 to 36 hours before that egg drops and once the egg drops you want to make sure that there's already sperm there waiting for the egg to drop does that make sense like that is going to that is going to increase your chances of getting pregnant now there are a lot of other things that can get in the way of course i have pcos myself so even if i do this correctly it's not always going to work because i do have um, cysts in my ovaries so there are other things there are other boundaries there are other things that can get in the way of me actually conceiving but for anybody who does not have any issues with fertility who doesn't have any cysts who doesn't have who's just trying to conceive and doesn't have any other issue um if you just time ovulation correctly, if you track your cycle and you time ovulation correctly, you take um, ovulation tests, there should be no reason why you're not going to fall pregnant like within the first couple, with the, within the first few months, you know? as It's all about timing, you guys. It's literally all about timing. But anyways, um, so taking ovulation tests is going to increase your chances of getting pregnant because of that. Because you are going to pretty much get a heads up. By taking ovulation tests, you have a, you get a heads up like, hey, here, you're peaking. Your your LH hormone is really, really high up, which means your body is getting is, is your body is gearing up to actually to ovulate. So, hey, start baby making like start, you know, start having sex and make sure that there is enough sperm in there for when never the egg is ready to drop. Does that make sense? Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys my ovulation uh, test for this month. For last cycle, it's actually for um, September because I'm in October right now. And I just finished my cycle, so I'm going to start five days after. Um, I'm going to start testing in five days. Okay, so you guys, I'm still using it. This is such a like, I don't know. It's, I think I got this like at the Dollar Tree or something at the Nine and Sister when I was first trying for Ethan. My son, if you guys are new to my channel, I do have a two year old baby boy. And um, when I started trying with him, I started using this notebook to, to just track my, to track all my, all my uh, ovulation tests. And I just wrote notes in here and it's so cute to like look back at. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm always going to keep this notebook. So I've had this since 2017. Yeah, 2017 is when I tried when I tried to get pregnant with him, and then um, he was born. Uh, he was born in 2018. So then, you guys, look, it's so cute. So this was Ethan right here when I was trying with Ethan, right here. And then in 2019 is when we started trying for baby number two. You guys can see up here, baby number two. So now for baby number three, um, I'm using the same notebook and I put baby number three because um, it will be my third pregnancy because it will be my third pregnancy. You guys, I, I had a second pregnancy, but it was a miscarriage. So, um, you know, baby number three right here. So I'm already tracking it. And let me show you guys. I'm actually going to pick up the camera and show you guys um, the other way, okay? Okay, so let me give you, so that you guys can understand a little better, let me give you a little background information. So, I got my period on September 5th, and it ended on September 9th. This is cycle day 10 because I started testing for, uh, I started testing five days after the last day of my period. So, if my period ended on day 9, then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, the 14th would be cycle day 10 since my period was five days long. Five days after the 9th would be the 14th. Yes, <laughs> would be the 14th. So that is cycle day 10. I get a lot of questions about that too. How do you guys count your cycle? You begin, day 1 is the day of your period. That is day 1 and you start counting from there. Okay, so September 14th was five days after my period was cycle day 10. I tested at 9 in the morning. All of these I try to always test first thing in the morning, okay? As you guys can see here, this is the control line and this is the test line. I'm sorry, this is the control line and this is the test line. The control line is dark and the test line is uh, faint. In order for you to have a positive OPK, the test line has to be just as strong, if not stronger, than the control line. That is how you know you get a positive. 
So this one, although it looks a little bit close to it, it's nowhere near as dark as this line. So same with here, cycle day 10, cycle day 12, even less. Cycle day 13, okay. Cycle day 14, cycle day 15, cycle day, oh sorry, cycle day 15, cycle day 16, and I put on here EWCM, that means egg white cervical mucus, and that is what is considered um, fertile, fertile CM, okay? So that is the first day that I saw that, which was on cycle day 16. And because I saw that, I was like, hmm, maybe I'm getting close, you know? So I tested in the morning and I tested in the afternoon, but they were still negative. Okay, cycle day 17, again. I'm so sorry about that background noise. I don't know why they decided to cut the grass right now. <laughs> but cycle day 17, it's a little stronger, but it's not as strong okay, still. So cycle day 17 p.m. Again, because I saw the EW on this side, I decided to test twice a day. So negative, it was still negative. It was still negative on the 17. Still negative on the 8, on, the, on cycle day 17 in the afternoon. Cycle day uh, 18 in the morning. It was a little strong, as you guys can see there. Almost just the same as this line, but not 100%. You know, I could still feel like, I feel like I could still see a little bit fainter here than this line. That was in the morning, but I tested again that same day, cycle day 18 in the afternoon, and bam, you guys, that was my first positive. You guys see the difference? Now this line looks a lot darker than this line. That's a positive. That means peak. That means that you have high levels of luteinizing hormone. That is the peak. So again, since you already get since I already got a positive, I tested again in the morning. Sure enough, another positive. Way darker. The left line is way darker than the right one. Even stronger down here. Cycle day 19 in the afternoon in the p.m., okay? On the 23rd, again, positive. I even wrote on there, positive. So I have the 22nd and the, 30, 20, and the 23rd of positive. Do you guys see that? Okay. How you know that you already ovulated is when you start seeing this line go back to a faint line. So cycle day 19 still, I tested again. I was obsessed, you guys. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I have a positive. So then um, another PM, which another evening, I tested again, positive. Cycle day 20, the 24th, the next day, negative. Okay, so I had positives for two days. The 22nd the and the 23rd were my two positive days. And then the 24th were already negative, as you guys can see on here negative and negative i just kept there was a 24th and then the 25th i just still tested even though i got a negative on the 24th i still te tested an extra day just to make sure that the levels were now going down um just to make sure that those were my positive just to make sure that those were my positive days so when you get that you guys when you see that Okay, when you see that, you know that you need to start having sex around this time. As soon as you see that, every single day, you're supposed to, or every day or every other day, you know, there's controversial um, information out there on whether it should be every day or every, or every other day, but um, you should be having sex when you have your peak like this, when you have positives like this. Okay, so I hope that made sense, you guys. I really hope that cleared it, that cleared everything up for you guys because I get questions every single day and I wanna make sure that I am explaining things right so that you guys understand it. Like I said, if you guys don't have any issues, I mean, even if you do, you know, 
tracking even if you do have fer uh, fertility issues or any other type of issues um, getting pregnant you should still be tracking your cycle you guys I cannot emphasize how important it is to track your cycle it's just always better to know to know when especially if you have a really um, irregular cycle it's still good to track it because what if you find that you're getting a period every three months, every four months? What if you find that you're getting positive ovulation tests only every two months or only every three months? Maybe you're not ovulating every single month. So it's just always good to track it and to know your cycle and know your body. And yeah, I honestly feel like that is going to help everybody who is trying to conceive or even if you're trying to prevent pregnant prevent even if you are trying to prevent pregnancy you guys the natural way this is the way people do it if you guys have heard of people doing um the natural i forgot what it's called but you know it's like it's like natural birth control it's pretty much just knowing your cycle and knowing what days not to be sexually active or what days to be extra careful to avoid pregnancy why because that is the time that you are that you have the highest highest chance of getting pregnant so anyways you guys that is all i have for today's video i really hope this was an informative video i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys want me to talk about anything else make sure you let me know if i missed anything make sure you let me know in the comments and yeah that's all i have for you guys today i will see you guys on the next one Bye bye